Okay, so since I'm doing a 16 box fun and squirt today, I thought it would be useful to actually incorporate some poultry genotypes in here. So I did solid black and lavender. So I used this putt and square when I was doing a breeding project to develop um, my lavender marins. You would use a putt and square like this to help you with your breeding goals. So this putt and square is a little different than the last one. Besides having 12 more boxes, you actually have two genes that you're mixing now and not just one. So last time it was the brown egg gene and the blue egg gene. This time it's each bird actually contains the black and lavender alleles. So how you're gonna mix this is a little different. So you wanna start off with, we're gonna label these one, two, three, and four. So you wanna start with mixing one and three. So big E, big L, and then one and four. I don't know if you can see this, but one and four. And so now you're gonna move over to the next um, allele, and that's two and three and then two and four. And so they're all the same on top. And I did this so it's easier this way. And then you're gonna move on for the next set so you can do the left hand side. And it's one and three. So this time it's a little L, that's not an I. And then one and four. And again, this is all the same. And so you're gonna mix it just how you did in the last button square. You put your E's together, the similars together, and this time it's actually um, big E, big E, and that's a small L in the capital L. And like I said, these are actually gonna be all the same, even this row. Just so it's easier that way. And so what I'm left with is a genotype of of this in every single box. So your offspring is going to be 100% E, E, and then we'll do small L, big L. And that is your, that's your final genotype of every single cross. And you may be asking yourself, what is this? When you mix a solid black bird and a lavender bird, all of the offspring come out black. And that's because you need two lavender genes to actually see the lavender be expressed phenotypically in the bird. And so phenotypically, again, means that you can visually see it, and the genotype is something that you can't see, it's the genetic makeup. So all of these crosses carry one lavender gene. And so they come off as black because they're not being phenotypically expressed because they don't have two lavender genes. So if you were to take this, all of the offspring from this cross, and back cross to a lavender. Some would be split, which is what this is called. And so I'll write the genotype over here of split, and that would be EE, -E. and then it only carries one um, lavender allele. Since all of the offspring are split, and I filled in the genotype here, the genotype of a solid black would be EE, -E and it would be homozygous dominant for the lavender, which means that it's not carrying any lavender genes at all. It's not a lavender bird, it's a solid black bird. But for the lavender birds, it's again on the EE base. These are almost always on the EE base unless you put them over a black copper marin, um, which is on the ER base, and it, there's no really name for that. I guess you would call it lavender copper. Um, but if it's a lavender bird, it's EE, and then it is homozygous recessive, it carries two lavender genes. So it's phenotypically expressed. And so it's important to note that lavender isn't a base, it's, it's a modifier. And so black, extended black they call it, and black copper are actually bases. They're the foundations which varieties are, are made from. And so lavender just modifies black. So there, it's a modifier, and there are many modifiers and there are many bases. And this isn't the whole genotype of the actual bird. There's many more genes that are involved in this, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to keep it lavender and solid black for this one. And then in future ones, you know, we'll extend it and we'll cross even more traits into it, such as lavender cuckoo or blue wheaton. And I'll show you those genotypes as we go along, because um, there are definitely many more genes involved in this process than just what I'm showing here.
And so I'm gonna use another example and we won't do lavender and black or we won't do, we'll do um, traits that are easier to see like orange eyes or um, feathered feet. So for this one, we're going to do a double heterozygote cross and then black or white shanks. Shanks are just feet. Um, so for this one, this one has feathered feet because feathered is dominant over um, non-feathered and it has black shanks. And so does this one, same thing. Feathered black. And so when you cross these, you're gonna have a mixture of alleles now because they're both carrying recessive alleles. The um, lowercase letters are recessive. So this is how we're setting it up. This is one, two, three, and four. And so when you're putting these, these groups up here, you want to cross one with three first. So F, B, one with four, F, lowercase b. And then you're going to move on to the next allele. And that's two and three, and then two and four. It's just a big crisscross. And you're going to do the same thing for this. And so on this, it'll actually be the same as this row. So F, B, F, B. Okay. And so you're going to combine the like terms. So you're going to combine the two capital Fs, as you see here, and then two capital Bs. And you're going to do the same thing for every single box. And if you're confused about what I'm doing, I'm taking, I'm just lining up the boxes like this. So little f, big F, little f, big f, little b, big b, or actually that's just a little b too, so two little b's. And then you're just going to keep doing this and matching them up. Okay, so this may look like a lot, but it's really easy once you just break each box down. So in order for it to be feathered, it only has to carry one dominant allele because that's dominant over the non-feathered. In order for it to have black shanks or black feet, it has to have one large B in the mix for it to see, for you to see um, black shanks on the chip. So this one has feathered and black shanks. This one has also feathered black shanks. Feathered black shanks, feathered black shanks, and the same thing for this. But here, it's feathered, but since it's carrying its homozygous for um, the white shanks, it's actually feathered with white shanks. And so, what you're gonna get when you do a double heterozygote cross is called, is a nine to three to three to one ratio um, of all the genotypes in the mix. And what I mean by that, you're gonna get nine of your dominants. So you're gonna get nine birds out of this cross that have feathered feet and white shanks. You're gonna get three with feathered feet and white shanks, I'm sorry, and black shanks. Then you're gonna get another three with non-feathered and black shanks. Finally, if you notice, 
the one. You're only going to get one during this cross that is recessive for both traits. And so you're only going to get one bird out of this mix that has non-feathered feet with white shanks. And this is um, a pretty accurate predictive tool. Sometimes these numbers may fluctuate a little. Maybe you'll get 10 to 2 2, um, but they'll always be around the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. If you're still confused, just shoot me a question down in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer if I can. And I'll do additional videos on this because it can definitely be confusing and it's something that can't be really squished into one lecture, so definitely don't feel bad if you don't get it the first time.